Hi, everyone. So my name is Shauna Purvey. I work on uh, the Google TV uh, content business development team. And today, the goal is to give you a, or at least simulate, a Google TV version 2 demo. Um, to start off with, I'm going to talk a little bit about TV in general, and then go into uh, the demo of the device that we have here. And at the end, feel free to, to ask me any questions that, that you may have. To start off with, how many of you, have you, any of you seen the version one, or how many people, just a show of hands, have seen Google TV before? Okay, great. Perfect. So, um, you know, we'll start off talking a little bit about, you know, the way Google looks at, at the industry, um, and, and then we'll go straight into the demo. So to start off with, you know, Google, TV is one of these industries that is, is so impressive, and, and when we look at you know, where does, where does Google want to play? Um, absolutely based on the fact that in the average American home there are three TVs. Um, those are the kinds of spaces that, that Google likes to enter and, and figure out how we can make this a, even a better user experience. So let's talk about, you know, uh, some of those numbers. So when you do the aggregation, it's really quite impressive. You have 1.5 trillion um, hours of TV watched globally if you add up you know, the average usage per user. And then in addition to that, you have about $400 billion every year in, advertiser, in advertising and subscription revenue. So in an absolutely enormous market. And then in addition to that, you have about 140 million connected TV devices um, that we expect to come into the market in, in the next couple of years, um, which is just a huge growth given the number that there are, that there are right now. So these are pretty... There we go. Um, so these are pretty impressive numbers, um, but the reality is that no one knows how these huge numbers are really going to affect the market uh, moving forward. What we do know is that the way we have been dealing with TV and the way that we will be dealing with, with TV um, will change drastically. And in fact, it really has already changed. So starting from just the, the, the way consumers use TV has, has already changed. So, you know, 30 years ago, if you happened to have your TV on on a random Thursday night, you know, the chances were, you know, one out of two that you were going to have your TV turn on to the Cosby Show. There weren't that many channels, maybe about 10, um, and, you know, something like the Cosby Show had basically a 50% uh, 50 audience share. Just a few years later, um, Seinfeld, which was the number one show, had about half of the audience share, and the number of channels had doubled even though it was, in fact, the number one show. And then, of course, you know, more recently, American Idol, which had the number one show for a long time, had a quarter of the audience share that the Cosby show had, um, and yet it was the number one show. And by then, we had already reached hundreds of, of cable channels. So the reality is, you know, the way people are watching television and the number of options they have um, available to them has really, has really grown, which causes content fragmentation. And today, it'll, that content fragmentation will continue to divide, not just by you know, the number of programming opportunities available, but also just how you could consume that content, on what kind of device. You know, before, it was just your TV. Now it's your phone. Now it's your DVR, your tablet, and so on and so forth. And we don't even know what other devices might come out. But the reality is that everybody is still watching TV. And the market doesn't, doesn't decrease, but rather continues to grow. So right now in America, the average, the average user watches five hours per day of TV. I don't watch five hours per day. I'd like to meet people who watch five hours per day, but apparently the average is five, it was five hours per day. The difference is that all of these users aren't just watching TV, as we all know. Um, even as you guys are sitting here, you're on your phones, you're on your laptops. You know, we don't have, we're not in a world of dedicated attentions anymore. We have uh, partial attentions. So I call this a uh, device monogamy. We no longer have device monogamy. We're doing multiple things at, um, at the same time always. So even though the TV has always been the center of the home um, for, you know, since its inception and will continue to be the center of the home, the way we interact with the TV has changed just because of the number of devices in the living room and also the, uh, the, amount, of, the amount of access that we have to different programming. And so just to, to reinforce 
You know, TV is not decreasing its importance, even though there are all these multiple devices. Um, the heaviest, this graph shows you the heaviest users of TV and how much more uh, TV they're consuming, which is pretty impressive given that this is a time lapse of only five years. And even those who don't watch that much TV, this is more like me, um, they're not watching any less TV because of all these devices and all of these, and all of these options. Um, so with all of this, you know, additional TV viewing and, and people spending more time, you know, you know, the question is, why do we even need internet connected TV or why does it happen? Well, why are we going to have now 140 million devices um, by the time that we reach 2014? And the reality is that it's kind of the perfect storm. Um, it's a, uni a unique time in history where we have several factors converging to, to bring us to the point. So first of all, just a critical mass and broadband access, especially in the US, and then for, you know, this will take a little bit more time around the world, but, but definitely in the US, you know, people have been talking about connected TVs since the 70s, and then really talking about it in the last 15 years. Um, but the reality is that we were never at a point in time where we had fast enough broadband penetration to make this a, to make this a reality. Um, you know, the second one is the internet maturity. It's no longer just a bunch of websites and links and page rank. Um, it's a very, very mature uh, network with video and, you know, a lot of interaction, a lot of usage. I mean, take YouTube, for example, which could have never existed 10 years ago. Um, a platform like YouTube now gets 3 billion views a day, which is just an insane number, and gets 48 hours of content uploaded every minute, which is millions and millions and millions of, of views um, a year. And then, of course, um, hardware. So now the availability hardware, the size, the processing speed, the cost is all going down dramatically. Um, and even at Google TV, I mean, we've experienced the, the drop in hardware costs even while um, in the last year of, of having this product. So this will continue to come down. It'll continue to become more, uh, you know, these kind of chips that have to be in these TVs will continue to become more available as the costs continue to drop. So we're basically we're at the, the best time for this to happen. So a little bit about you know, TV, TV with an internet cable plugged inside of it. So first, you know, I think a lot of times we, the Google TV platform gets uh, you know, labeled as a cord cutting device or as a device that doesn't play well with, with the current content programmers and, and, and ecosystem. But the reality is like, we understand the power of the TV and how important it is. Um, you know, we have a great, a lot of respect for the television as well and, and you know, the emotions that uh, the, the TV captures more than any other device in the household. Um, there's something kind of magical about the device that's in your living room. Not only is it physically in the center of the living room, um, it's this device that just captures all of our imaginations. It's a great storytelling vehicle um, and really we see, we see nothing but a bright future for, for the app, for this um, living room device. So the question is, you know, how do we bring internet to, to the television? Because the internet is, of course, changing the world. Um, but when you're talking about a device that has for years been, you know, uh, one message to its entire audience medium, and then you add the internet, which gives users a lot of choice, how can these two coexist? Which is exactly what we're trying to do with Google TV. Um, so the reality is that, you know, the, the internet is, in fact, um, the definition of personal. It allows, you know, if I were to go to CNN.com, I have a hundred different links I can choose from. I, it's it's a choose your own adventure, and if my husband were to go to CNN.com, there's no way that he and I, if we spent 10 minutes on the platform, would would go to the same would go to the same pages. Whereas if he were watching CNN in New York and I were watching it here, we would watch the same exact programming. So the reality is when you bring that that concept of personal choice and, and tailoring programming to the user, to the TV, things are of course going to change. And that includes making, making the television much more personal and social. Um, you know, we're super excited about the, the implications of social TV. We know of course um, the, the story of, of Twitter driving more TV views um, and, and Facebook driving more TV views. Uh, so this of course will be a, a big uh, point of change. And then, of course, there's engagement. So before, you know, even in the last five years, 
Um, even though there's been more kind of engagement with the television, it's still pretty much a, a passive TV device. And so we're hoping with the, with the connection of the internet to the TV and with the addition of applications that can help people interact, we can finally um, offer content programmers the, the ability to interact with their users uh, right there on the couch as opposed to sending them off to, to their website, sending them off to Facebook, sending them off to these different places um, where they have to happen to remember the website later on and go and interact with um, Modern Family as opposed to saying, hey, open the Modern Family app right now while you're watching TV because your, your TV's internet connected and let's engage with our, with our audience right at this moment. And so, you know, what happens next? So basically, there's a long road ahead of us. It's really, really, really early. Uh, you know, this industry took 80 years to build. Uh, Google has been working on a TV product for about four years with about a team of 100 people. So it's a really big initiative for us, but we realize it's really early. Um, and, you know, our, our version of the V1 that came out last year was proof that it was really early. Um, and we, you know, we know that the entire industry still still has to grow. However, there are some lessons that we have taken from mobile, um, and if we extrapolate those, we can you know, potentially uh, predict how this, how this might work. So you know, first was, when we were first started building this platform, um, we started building a platform that was specific for the TV. And then what happened was, in the middle of building this platform, um, Apple came out with its smartphone. And that revolutionized everything, and that you know, taught us, wow, you know, maybe we're going about this the wrong way, we should take a cue from Apple and potentially have a different direction. And what they did that was so different was they didn't limit the sites that you could access on the phone um, to you know, WAP sites. They said, you know what, we're gonna give you a full browser and if people wanna go to kayak.com and search for a flight on their little tiny screen, they should be able to do that. If they wanna go read a USA Today art article on the little tiny phone, even though it's not a great experience, they should be able to do that. So when we saw that, um, we scrapped what we were working on at Google and uh, started building basically a, a Chrome browser for, for the television. And so that became what the, that, that project, that new project is what is today Google TV. So we took that lesson from Apple, put a full browser um, on, the, on the television and, and went from there. So, you know, where are we now? So people often ask, what is Google TV? And I can understand why it's so complicated. We didn't do the best job of making that really clear last year. Um, and so we've kind of simplified what, what, it, what Google TV is. So the really easy way to explain it is it's Android operating system plus a Chrome browser plus search. And so I'll show you those three things right now. Can you cut the audio on the TV? So just as, a, um, just as a disclaimer, we don't have live satellite feed inside of this room. Um, and so I am using a DVR to simulate TV. So we do have a little bit of limitations on the, on the demo, um, but you know, we can just pretend that we have TV in the background. Um, I don't know how many of you can see it, but I'm basically going to be demoing off of this box. It's a Sony Blu-ray player. Right now we have um, three types of devices in the market. So we have set-top boxes that all they do is add Google TV to your current device. We have Blu-ray players with Google TV inside of them. And then we have actual TVs with, with Google TV inside of them. So what I'm showing you right now is off of this, off of this Blu-ray player. So um, the three things that we Basically, the three lessons that we learned from last year uh, in the product were, uh, one, we needed to make the product more intuitive. So a lot of feedback on the UI, there was a lot of nested menus, it was really difficult to use, it was loaded with features, but no one could understand any of them. Um, and so those are the kinds of things that we, that we wanted to fix. Um, the, second, the second lesson we learned was, um, you know, people don't want to wait a year to be able to build applications. So when the first iPhone came out, they could wait a year or 10 months, um, and there was no app development platform. But the reality is we're in a world where developers want to develop, um, and we need to make the Android market available to them today so that they can do that. And then the third, you know, the thing, third thing that we learned was um, search is great, and Google TV does search really well, um, but people only know what they're looking for about 50% of the time. 
the other 50% of the time, they want to sit down and be entertained. They want to um, have some kind of browse experience that lets them figure out what's on TV in an easy way. And so those are the three things that we focused on over the last year. And then recently, about a week ago, we launched our, our version two, uh, which we call Google TV on Honeycomb. Honeycomb is the latest operating system from Android. They're named after desserts in alphabetical order. Um, so now we are up to par with the latest operating system. Ice cream sandwich is basically honeycomb for a phone, if any of you have that question. So um, I'll go ahead and show you kind of the, the three things that we've been working on. So just to refresh your memory, so for search, uh, again, that's kind of our bread and butter. It's where we make all of our money. That's where all of our expertise is. So that was something that we worked on for a long time and we're really able to, to integrate elegantly. And I'll give you a, an idea. So this is the input device. Um, there's a search button here, it's a magnifying glass. I select it, and the search, um, the search uh, box comes up. So if we were watching regular TV, the picture would be a little bit brighter in the background, um, and we, wouldn't, we wanna make sure that the user knows that they're still on TV and hasn't been taken away to, to any different place. Um, so the search, the search box comes up, and then I search for what I'm looking for. So law and order. And of course, um, you know, Law and Order is always playing somewhere on some channel um, because there are eight different series of Law and Orders and they each have 20 episodes, 20 seasons. Uh, so that's why I use it for, as an example. So I'll walk you through these different search results um, so that you understand how we're ordering things and we'll go from there. So I'll start with what you know. So this little TV symbol on the right hand side, this tells me Law and Order is playing right now. So like I said, it's always playing somewhere. Um, if, I, if I were to select this and had an actual satellite feed, I would be taken to Law and Order immediately. So no more pushing the guide button and then having to scroll down all the little gray boxes with the blue letters and then scrolling over a few half hours to see if it's on and then scrolling down again. Because the reality is, you know, I've been watching Law and Order for years and I still don't know what channels it runs on on my TV. There's just too many channels. If you have, you know, at home we have Dish and if you have Dish, there's like 10,000 channels listed in your guide. So if you get stuck on like channel 7,412, you'll be scrolling for a really long time. So the goal here was to just get the user to what they want really quickly. Um, my husband loves this feature because on Saturday mornings he turns on the TV, searches for Tennessee Volunteers football to see exactly what time they're playing and on exactly what channel so he can get there right away and doesn't have to like search for listings. Um, if it's a really bad Saturday for me, he'll just search a really broad term like college football and Google TV will return every college football game playing. So um, that's, that's how search works for live TV. Then I'll take you to the second result. So the second result is your standard white page, blue links. We basically open a Chrome browser and take you to the, the same search result that would pop up on any of your computers if you were to do the same result. So here I could select any of these, um, any of these different results and I would go to the same place as, as my you know, browser on my, on my Mac would. If there was an ad showing on the right hand side, which there isn't, but if there were, um, there's nothing that advertiser is doing to actually uh, pop up here on Google TV. They're just, um, th we're just showing the same result as, uh, as, as, a, as a regular browser. So here we have the live TV result, which I could change to right away and get to the show. Here's the Google.com search results. And then here is a new set of results that we've basically created for, for Google TV. Um, so this is extrapolating all of the video um, content and trying to bring the authoritative content up to the front uh, for the television. So this is a search results page that we've created specifically for Google TV. We call it our, um, our video results. And so we've searched for law and order and you see we have kind of two classifications here. So one, we have series. So this is you know, the different law and order series that are available you know, period. Regardless of whether you can watch them through Google TV or you can watch them on linear television or wherever, this is just the, the, the series results. Um, and we're actually having a bug right now because this is an internal build, um, but there are eight series <laughs> of Law and Order. And then below are high ranking particular episodes. So it might be because an episode is coming up on TV soon or because it's really popular. You know, we have a lot of different signals that we take into account here to, to show this algorithm. So I'll go over to SBU because that's my favorite. Um, and we're taken to basically an entity page. So what we've tried to do is build a, a guide for each show that's ever run on TV in the US, uh, which is not really something that has been available um, in the past. So first we have like a kind of an entity page. So this gives you the title of the show, you know, a few of the actors, and then um, an overview of the show. And of course, we're not crawling the EPG here. We've 
done all of these data acquisitions and licenses to be able to create this kind of page for every TV show and movie. And so here you see um, you know, a few related shows uh, that helps you decide if this is something that you want to watch. Um, and then, of course, you can rate it. So I like this. I'm going to rate it five stars. Um, and if I opt in, Google will take into account my ratings in, into our algorithm for when, for when they give me results in the future. So they're taking my personal interest into account when they serve me a search result. I can also opt in to tell Google, you know what, track what I watch. And based on what I watch, give me more results that are similar to what I watch. So, but that's opt-in, that's opt-in only. So you get an overview of the show, you go to episodes and you decide, okay, I wanna, I wanna start watching. And so here we have season 12, we've listed every single episode out in every single season for every single show. Um, and then we've given you options for, for how you can actually consume the show. So if I select whatever that was, episode, um, you know, episode 20, I get what's called a playback page. So this playback page is analogous to our google.com search results. We've basically indexed a lot of different ways that you can consume this content and then are telling the user how you can actually watch this. So it, for this particular episode that tells me on Netflix, um, I, can open, I can open Netflix, uh, launch the app, and the, and the show will start playing right away. Also, it gives me options to, to purchase, the, purchase this particular show on Amazon. And so if I were to select um, the Amazon option, we again la launch the Chrome browser uh, and are sending the user to Amazon.com. So this is organic traffic for Amazon. There's nothing they did. They're not paying us a bounty or a referral fee. Uh, we just want to get the user. We just want to connect them with the content as quickly as possible. So here on the right-hand side, you can see you know, it's $1.99 for you know, to buy this particular episode. If you want to buy the whole season, you can do it for $25. And again, that, all that purchasing and the sign-in and login, the authentication, this is all handled between the user and, and Amazon. And you know, we're, we just have a Chrome browser. Um, and, and of course, you know, we, we offer this playback for, for every single episode and, and try to find the user the best, um, the best kind of content uh, that's best for them. If it was playing on TV, we would also have we would also have a, a TV result uh, for that particular episode, but it isn't. So you can see it's been five minutes and now Law and Order is on another page. It's on another channel too. So I've showed you, you know, here are the live TV results. If we selected those, we would go straight to TV. Here's Google.com and then here's the uh, search results specific for Google TV. Um, and then we have also uh, a result. This is the entity page. So instead of going to the search results and then landing on the entity page, if I selected this, I would go straight to this show entity page, which gives me overview and access to, to all the different episodes of, of Google TV. So that's the way search works. Um, similar, except for now we have uh, this, this guide application that we've, that we've built as part of search results. So the other, um, the other thing that we basically enhanced was the, the UI. So if I go back to um, my home button, now we've really, really simplified it. So before when I pressed home, I went to a different channel altogether in B1. Um, you wouldn't really be able to see that your, your TV anymore. Uh, we had a lot of nested menus and it was pretty complicated. Here we've tried to simplify. You press home, you can still see the TV playing in the, in the background. And there's nothing um, too complicated about this. So I'll walk you through these, different, um, through these different icons so you get a chance to sense of what we're doing. So obviously the clock, and then here's your status notifications. So if you have something like a system update or any of your apps have, have notifications, that, that's, your, that's, your status, uh, that's your status icon. Um, here's live TV. So one of the big complaints we got was people don't know how to get back to live TV. So if I select this, I get back to my TV channel right away, um, and there's no, there's, there's no hassle. This is the, the guide application we talked about. This is the, the browse experience for, for how to uh, discover content, which I'll take you through. This is obviously the YouTube app specific for Google TV. Um, the Android market, opening a Chrome browser, Netflix, and search. So just to walk you through these. We'll go back to the, um, to the guide application. So we kind of access that entity page through search because we were looking specifically for law and order. But if I didn't know what I wanted to watch, I could actually just open up um, the guide and, and get an idea for, for, for what's on. So on the left-hand side, there's a couple of organizing principles here. So the first one is just what's on your linear feed. 
So when you set up your Google TV, you put in your address, you put in your MSO, um, and you tell me, you know, you, you tell the computer, oh, HBO or, or ESPN, you tell them who you subscribe to. And then on the left, I mean on the right, you're, you're able to um, then see what is on. So instead of just trying to you know, find what are the movies that are on TV right now through your regular guide, you can use Google TV to see all of your options. And so on a, any given day, I'll use this because you're able to find a lot more content um, and really the pictures are worth a thousand words here. So you'll see how many movies are actually on TV. We can scroll down for quite a bit of time and see all the content available to us and we're still, and we're still scrolling down. And so this allows you to say, you know, um, Only the Lonely, which is, a, which is an old show that you probably wouldn't, or an old movie that you wouldn't have been familiar with. Um, there's no way that if I saw Only the Lonely on a guide with a gray box and blue letters that I would know what that was, or I would know who was in it. But this, you know, tells me, okay, this is probably like a funny, a funny movie from the late 80s that I would want to watch. Um, and you can select that and we'll take you straight there. So it actually gives you a much better way of discovering the content that, frankly, you're already paying for um, through your linear feed to, to Comcast or, or Time Warner, et cetera. And then, um, and that's for movies. So when it comes to shows, instead of organizing the rest of the content by channel, channel 401, 402, 403, um, we've taken the approach that it's better to organize it by genre, um, of the, at least the shows organizing them by genre. So we have these broad, shelves right now, comedy, drama, sports. There's about 10 different, 10 different shelves, and you can decide, oh, I want to see what are all the comedies that are on right now. And of course, we give you a picture, and soon we'll get like a little descriptor, a one sentence descriptor that, that um, hovers over the, the pictures to give you a sense for, for what you want to watch. And of course, you see on the bottom it says starts in three minutes, starts in three minutes. Um, this tells you, this tells you what's about to be on. And if you didn't want to know right now, but you wanted to know, you know, half an hour from now, we would tell you, okay, here are all the shows that actually start at 1230 in case you were in, in case we gave you too many results that were already mid, mid playback. Now everything that we've shown you so far, that I've shown you so far has to do with what's on your actual MSO feed, so what you're getting from Comcast, what's actually on TV. But if you didn't care if it was coming from TV or from Amazon or from Netflix, then you could select one of these. So this is shows and this is movies. So we'll just go to movies. And so these are all movies that are available to you regardless of if it's coming from uh, your linear feed or if it's coming from tbs.com or wherever it's coming from, we just wanna get you to the content. So if I were to select Bridesmaids, I see again, you know, a little overview, um, a few details about it. I can, I can rate uh, how well I enjoyed my experience when I watched it, and then I press rent. So this tells me, okay, look, you can rent it on, on Amazon. You can rent it on Amazon.com. If I do an actual search, let's say I'm in the mood for some aliens, I'll again get taken to um, the entity page for this particular movie. And if I selected watch, I have uh, more options here. So you'll see that first we're gonna show you what you've already paid for. For as a user, we wanna make sure that you're getting value out of those packages. So here it tells me, you know, I'm a subscriber to HBO and it's already on HBO right now and there's 15 minutes left. Then it's telling me, you know what, you can authenticate through the hbo.com app um, that they've built for Google TV. And if you authenticate, you can watch it right away. Next, it tells me, you know, there's a stars, there's a stars viewing in a couple days or tomorrow night that I can watch, um, and then I can rent it from Amazon, or I can, uh, this is supposed to be rental, I can rent it from YouTube as well. So again, we're trying to give the user all the possible options for, for how they can consume the content. So that's pretty much the, um, the guide app, the, the discovery app that we've, that we've built for the platform. And then the YouTube experience, Specific for the, for the TV, you know, um, we've just tried to make it really D-pad navigable so that you can get around uh, pretty easily and then search for, what it is that you're looking for. And we open up full screen automatically, uh, so the experience is more like a TV experience. If you guys haven't seen this video, you've gotta see it. It's, uh, Pretty hilarious. 
And so that's the, that's the YouTube experience. So you've seen the, you've seen the home, um, the home bar, which is our UI redesign, and I've showed you our browse experience. So the last thing is the Android market. So when we launched um, a, couple, a couple weeks ago, we finally ported to Honeycomb, which allows us to bring the Android market. So this is the same market that you would find on Android phones and tablets. It's just um, that we've applied filters so that not all the apps come through. So the Android market has about 250,000 apps, and obviously a lot of those apps you know, that require GPS, accelerometer, um, those kinds of things wouldn't make sense on a TV. So here we've filtered a lot of those out and featured the apps that are built specifically for, for TV. So at the top we have some of our uh, more popular apps and then uh, some more apps that we've, that we've uh, featured here. So we have some, you know, some gaming apps, and uh, it's not just it's not just video. There's a lot of other things that, that people are people are using. For example, this is one of our more popular applications. Can you give me sound? So it's a classy fireplace because I think of the music in the background. But people will just turn this on and leave it on for five hours. So, <laughs> so it gets really high ratings. And of course you can change the scene in case you know it's hot outside, like it always is in LA. So people just leave these different these different scenes on um, and turn their TV into something else than than just a just the TV. So walk you through a few um, a few other apps. So Wall Street Journal, um, obviously you guys know the newspaper, but they've uh, recently launched um, you know live content, and so here's an app where they're basically trying to be a, a, a TV channel. And you'll see, um, you know, here it it's, needs an update, so we're just updating the app. And it's installing. Um, Consumer Reports really basically said no way will we recommend that. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. There you go. So um, on this particular on this particular implementation, you can cut the the down. Um, You know, Wall Street Journal has decided to make it look just like a TV channel, so they drop you into in this case a commercial. Um, But you know, they they want to make it feel just like just like a, a TV channel. And so they also have um, live streaming that they're, that they're doing through here so that when the user opens it, it goes to whatever, whatever is being streamed live. And of course there are VOD options too that you can select. Um, and here they take you and you can see all the different live streaming that's, a, that's available. So a lot, of, um, you know, a lot of folks taking advantage of the ability to look just like a TV channel uh, but, on a, but on a television through the internet when you don't actually have room from an MSO to, to, have an actual, to have an actual channel. So those are a couple of the apps that, uh, that we have. And of course, you know, one of the things that took us by surprise is that Android has a conference every May called, for, for specifically for developers, called I.O. And um, you know, we weren't sure if people were really ready to, to develop for the, for the television. But turns out they are, and um, at, our, at our session at I.O. for Android developers, it was the o- most oversubscribed, and we've had um, thousands and thousands and thousands of developers inquire about how to develop for the, for the platform, because I think, of course, everyone's really excited about seeing their app on TV. So that was the Android market, um, and once you've downloaded your apps, which I've already taken to you guys too, is here's where you have all your, all your apps. So you can, you know, just access all your apps. These aren't, um, this is just alphabetical, so you can't really change the order. The other thing you can do is you can bookmark particular websites. Like the U- New York Times is just a website that we bookmarked um, and made a shortcut to from my all apps, from my all apps section as well. We also have a few proprietary apps like this Photos app 
that pulls in both your Flickr and your, and your uh, Picasa stream. Um, sometimes I turn on Pandora, I leave Pandora running in the background for music, and then um, run my slideshow um, at the same time. So before a dinner party or whatever, you have your photos playing with some music, and, and people are watching that. You can also just do kind of like a, a standard slideshow as well with that. So you saw the, um, and of course we have a Chrome browser that goes, that goes everywhere. And that's basically, um, that's Google TV V2. So you've seen search, um, our new UI, uh, the, the browser, and the Android market, and of course our new proprietary apps like Photos, um, YouTube, and, and things of that nature. That's pretty much it. Are there any questions? So the question about um, is there integration for, for Google Plus? So you know Google, all Google products are supposed to be uh, really working to make sure that Google Plus is a part of every platform. Um, we haven't been we haven't been working on that right now because we're just trying to focus on streaming, getting the, the app development platform. But in the short future, we definitely will be. I'm sorry, international languages. So right now we're just English only. We're only launched in the U.S. Um, but it is something that we obviously uh, want to support, and so I think we'll start looking at international languages once we launch outside of the U.S. Yeah. Uh, I've got two questions for you. One, uh, looks like you're only indexing uh, partners with Google. What about the Apple Store? What about Vudu? What about any other stores so people can really see the length and breadth of stores uh, available and the content available in those other stores. The second question for a long-suffering uh, Logitech owner is when are we going to get ours? So I'll answer your, your long-suffering question first. So, um, so when you work with the different OEMs, um, we give them the stack and then whenever they are ready, they, they push. Um, so we don't really have a lot of control over that. Um, but they are planning on pushing in the next couple weeks. So you should get that soon. And, you know, this month. And then the second, um, for, so for your first question in terms of, so we wouldn't have, I don't know if your first store you said was the App Store, um, but that's iOS. No, I'm talking about the App Store for movies. Oh, for, yeah, so that's still, so Apple uses their own proprietary DRM and their own proprietary system. Um, so you won't see Apple, you, you won't see Apple compatibility with, with Google products, just like you don't have that on your Android phone. You wouldn't see it on, on, on TVs either. Um, in terms of other, in, to, in terms of other partners, uh, we actually index anybody that we can crawl. So you know, we have, we want, we've wanted in terms of that that guide experience that I showed you guys. Um, we want to make sure that this is a really safe place for programming too. So it's all going to be authoritative uh, content, and we have a pretty tight control over over who we index here. Uh, but if the if it's legitimate source of content, we want to make sure that we can. We can index it. So things like Voodoo, um, as long as Voodoo has the technology to work on the platform, you'll see it see it integrated. So the goal here is to have as many sources as possible. Uh, hi. Uh, about the thematic uh, searching, for example, if I search like martial arts or, or, or comics, uh, the, the results um, depends on the, the language that, that I search. Uh, how about that in, in this uh, system? Is it, you mean in the market or just the TV search? No, in, in, in general. In TV search. So if you, if I, if you, is the question, um, if a user searches for a TV show in another language, will it come up? Not, not oh. a TV show, uh, a thematic search. For example, a, a theme. So a, a, a comic or a, a sport or yeah. something like that. Yeah. I mean, you can search in whatever language because we have a Chrome browser, right? So if, if nothing comes up from the TV standpoint. No, but, but the programs, uh, obviously in, in Google Chrome, that's right, but the, the list of the programs in TV, in, TV, in TV schedule. So you're saying, you know, can you search a, like a Spanish language program? For example. Yeah, so um, you know, you can definitely search a Spanish language program in Spanish and, and it'll come up. So like if I do a search for, um, you know, if I do a search for Sábado Gigante. No, but not the program, the, the theme, for example, sports or deporte. Deportes, like yeah. if you were to, yeah. to do that. Yeah, I mean, basically, I mean, you can search whatever you want, and um, you're going to see, 
You know, if we don't have something, obviously, so here's... Okay, but the, the results are in, in Spanish program. How about it? I want the results also a sport program in, in another language. Yeah. Yeah, so if it's on TV, yes. if it's on TV, it doesn't matter what the language is because you know, it's just an algorithm, right? So we're saying if, if your search matches whatever's on TV, regardless of what language is it, it's in, we're going to bring it up. So that's why I was doing the search for like Sabado Gigante. It's bringing up that show. Okay. for uh, uh, home media and home media being included in the search? For home media, like yeah. things that you have on a local network? Yeah, things you have in your local network. And I guess my second question, are, are, um, are the uh, uh, pay-per-view options or the on-demand options from the uh, pay TV pro provider included in the search, or is that something that's planned? Yeah, so the first question is, um, are, you know, are if you have a bunch of movies on your home network, is that available to you? So we haven't prioritized that because we've been working on streaming and building the platform, um, but we recognize a lot of people have great libraries at home and want to use access to that. So what we've done is um, enabled developers to, to fill that space. So there's a bunch of different developers who've come up with you know, home networking options to make sure that that's, that's integrated. It, doesn't, it won't come up in our, in our kind of browse experience, um, but you can definitely play that through Google TV using one of the apps that the developers have created. And then the second question is, is your, uh, so pay-per-view, no, um, as, as a traditional pay-per-view channel. Um, and in terms of the VOD offerings offered by like Comcast, um, so they have to tell us what their library is. There's no way for us to search the electronic programming guide. Um, so for example, if you have DISH, DISH has told us what their VOD uh, library is. So we are able to tell you if it's available through DISH VOD. But the key there is that the, the MVPD has to be able to tell us what their library is. Um, I mean, you can just reach out to you can just re reach out to us. I mean, we want to include everyone. No, I'll give you my card. Yeah. So um, the the great thing about uh, porting to Google TV Honeycomb is that you're you use the same SDK as a developer for <coughs> developing for the TV that you would for the tablet. So, you know, in some cases, the apps port really well and there's nothing that you have to do. Um, and in some cases, you have to optimize for a 10-foot UI because you're no longer using a touch screen and you're no longer using a tablet right in front of your face. You're 10 feet away and you have a little bit of um, kind of UI work to do. But the goal, I mean, the concept behind having Android on all these different devices is to make that world easier for, for developers. I mean, we work with developers who are developing for 10 different OEMs um, and they have to be developing on completely different stacks, obviously. Um, so the, the goal here is to make it as easy as possible. It's already been, it's been published since, since the SDK came out for um, Honeycomb in February. So it's already out there. something that is exposed via the developer's APIs? So for instance, I work for ESPN, mm -hmm. uh, and our content changes very frequently. Mm -hmm. Is that something that we would be able to uh, you know, provide to the general search functionality of Google TV? So um, the way HBO Go is integrated is because you know, we're working with them specifically to make sure that they're, that they're in. And we're, of course, we're working with ESPN as, as well. Um, to, to see how to make sure to kind of index ESPN3 and, and those kinds of things, which is a great experience on here, by the way, too, um, because you can just open up the browser, open up ESPN3, and watch it on your TV instead of your computer. Um, so we, we're working individually with content programmers and owners to do that. It's not anything that we just expose through the API. What's the highest data rate for your shooting staff? I have no idea. So the question is, what's the input device for Google TV? So um, each of the OEMs came out with their own input devices. So um, this is the one, even though I'm controlling um, Sony, I'm using a Logitech keyboard. Um, and we didn't really have any input over these devices. Uh, we kind of left that up to the OEM. So in the next hardware generations to come up, uh, we're actually 
designing those controllers to make them a little bit more living room friendly. And then of course you also have, um, and so these controllers come with the, with the product. When you buy a Logitech box or when you buy a Sony box, you get these controllers. Um, and then in addition, we've actually created both iOS and Android applications. So you can download them on your phone or your tablet for, for both operating systems. And then we've open sourced those apps, which means any, any developer could take our, our source code for that and create a control for the TV. Um, so that leads to a lot of like interactive games and, and whatnot too. Um, Hi, can you tell me about uh, your support for multi-channel sound and um, uh, your support for what video codecs come down the box? So for um, multi-channel sound, I don't know the answer to that question, but if you ask me afterwards, I can get it for you too. Um, and then for, for video codecs, so we were supporting um, basically H.264. And um, you know Google is a big proponent of VP8, so in the future we'll obviously do that. But we're we're trying to hit the the codecs that hit the most amount of content right now. Yep. Right next to him. Hi. Do you ever intend to integrate DVR capabilities? And do you ever see this um, being a direct competitor to things like the PlayStation and the Xbox? Like ever putting um, gaming capabilities in here. So like really taking over the living room, which yeah. is what some of your competitors are thinking of doing yeah. or trying to do. So question around, you know, what's the basically the roadmap and what is our focus? So I think our focus right now is just video, right? And linear television and, and supporting that linear television feed. So, you know, from a, you know, is Google, do you buy Google TV um, if you don't have already a subscription to, um, you know, Comcast? I would say not yet, right? So that's really not what we're looking for. We're looking to support, we're looking to support the current content ecosystem. Um, and, uh, and so that's our, that's our focus. And then in terms of gaming, I mean, I think we want to be a player in casual gaming because even though there's, you know, a ton of Xbox and PS3s out there. You know, my household will never have an Xbox or PS3 because I won't allow my husband to have one of those. Um, and so there are <laughs> there are a lot of houses that that need social gaming or could benefit from social and casual games. So I think in that space, uh, we do want to we do want to play. But you know, the the first person shooter games that are you know require really strong processing. I don't think you'll see us be in that direction any anytime soon. Hi, could you uh, talk a little bit about the ad model, if there is one here, and if it would potentially overlap at all with uh, Google TV advertising, which is, I believe, separate altogether? Yeah. So Google TV ads, despite the name, so the question is around the, the ad model. Um, and Google TV ads, even though it sounds very similar, um, we're, we're not, you know, we, I don't see any overlap there. Um, in terms of ad model in general, I mean, I think we're really just focused right now on getting the user experience right. If you guys read any of the articles that came out when we launched last year, you know that we had a lot of work to do on the user experience, and frankly, we still, we still do. I mean, this, this space took 80 years to build, right? And it's, we're so early, we've been working on this for four years, but we have a long way to go. So I think until you really see consumer adoption being in the tens of millions, we're, we're not really um, looking at advertising. Now, from an app developer perspective, um, because we're Android platform, we have all the same monetization capabilities as Android does inside of your apps. And so same standard kind of 70, 30 rev share split. And then um, what happens is if you serve your own ads in there, uh, we don't take any of it. So you get to keep 100% of the, the ads. Uh, companion device experiences on the roadmap, and have you guys thought of incorporating some of the, uh, the the navigation capabilities on just Android phones or through an app on whatever smartphone device that you might have? I'm sorry, what was the first part of the question? Um, companion device experiences. So I, I know you guys have been focused on the UI and yeah. and just the TV, but as you do get into monetization and so forth, is there any consideration about what you do with the companion device to either increase engagement with the TV, so yep. when content's playing, do you have something else going? Um, is that on the roadmap? Yeah, so the second screen devices that are starting to come out now, if I'm watching Grey's Anatomy on my television, I open up um, 
you know, my, my tablet will know that I'm watching Grey's Anatomy and will, give, will feed me kind of second screen content or, um, you know, Bones, the Fox just came out with a second screen app for Bones too. So yeah, absolutely, we, we have that on the roadmap. Um, it's just a matter of building the technology that's able to detect what you're watching on TV. And then what was the second question? Lost um, around navigation, have you guys considered uh, an app to do that? So everyone has a smartphone for, yeah. at least in the US, I know everyone does, but. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, so in terms of, in terms of, you know, will Google outsource another party to do navigation on the platform? No, but, um, you know, how are we looking to make it easier to do? I think we, we already introduced voice, even though we haven't focused a lot on it, so you'll see other things that we're working on um, to, to help get around the, the UI as well. So yeah, we're definitely working on other ways but we'll be building that proprietarily. Uh, yeah, so you have any uh, announcements about uh, Motorola having this in the headset when you want to use it with the Google TV version? No. No. Can I stream my Google TV? Um, using, using HLS, yes. Can you speak a little bit about the library or something? Yeah, so it's, um, it's algorithm, so we take 100 different signals into place and it's a little bit of our secret sauce. Um, but we do lots of data deals to try and get as much information as, pos as possible, you know, from Nielsen about what's popular. Also, kind of some, you know, from, like I showed you, if I rate it, if I rate it highly, um, then we take that into consideration and we'll be working on a lot of other things. But, I mean, we're just trying to get as many signals as possible to understand um, and feed you back the exact result that you're looking for. Um, so just as we do on Google.com, that's always a challenge and we're always tweaking the algorithm and it's the same thing. But, you know, it's a combination of data we create ourselves, data the user gives us, um, you know, data that we're getting from, from the aggregate, and then even things like search data. Well, um, you mean one profile is in like one user, but then the TV is a shared device in the in. Well, it's more of a if you take a few platforms from Google and then you do a search, uh -huh. you're going to end up finding an average profile that when you do the searches with are offered as a recommendation, which is likely the same probability that, that someone will act on it. However, it doesn't stretch case beyond what everyone is likely to do, so it ends up being more to itself and pushing people towards the very same behavior pattern. Yeah, which is why it's only one of a hundred signals we take into account. Yeah, I mean, we're, and of course we have entire, you know, we've got 30 people working on, on that particular thing. You know, how do we serve people the, the kind of content that they're looking for? Yeah. Is there a question? Is that it? Oh, one right here. Are you gonna make the uh, content providers, uh, are you gonna give them access to your analytics? Uh, well, right now we don't have, we don't really have any analytics that we're, that we're tracking. I mean, it's very, it's very light. Um, you know, in terms of, you know, do we wanna be in the Nielsen, in the game of what Nielsen's doing? I mean, right now we're basically a, a customer of Nielsen, um, and so we're buying their analytics, but, um, you know, I don't, I'm not sure that that's the place that we wanna be anytime soon. Is that it? Well, thank you everyone for coming. I appreciate your time.